Hello, and welcome to our Serenade video. In this video, we will walk you along the process of how to create an employment-based case, taking you from creating the profile, creating the case, and finally working on the form. We will first want to log into the caseworker portal. The first thing we want to do is establish client profiles for the employer, who they are petitioning for, and any possible signatory whose info you want on the forms. In our software, there are two ways to go about that. You can either send a questionnaire to your client or manually insert the info yourself. For this video, we will take you the route of entering the information manually. We will click on the Create button up top and then select Client. We will first want to create the employer, so we will select a type as Business. You will now see business-specific questions. Please note, you don't have to fill out every section right now. You can always come back and enter this info. The only required field is the name. Once you've entered the info, you will click on Create Contact. We are now in the Business Profile. Everything is divided into right-hand tabs to easily take us to a different section of the Business Client Profile. When entering info on a section, be sure to click on save before moving on to a different section. Now, the purpose of having client profiles established is the more info you have on these profiles, the more info auto-populates onto forms. This means if you're working on a case with 10 forms and tag this client to the case, all the info will transfer over. Besides that, these client profiles can also be used in future cases, so no need to recreate client profiles and you can run reports with specific info from these profiles. If we look at the tabs to the right, we can see info you can add, such as addresses, the headquarters and the default address, the individual branches, you can enter any branch address and select it at the moment of creating the case, and the members tab. The members tab is where you want to link the employee, but also any signatory. To do so, you will click on the Link Member icon. You will then be asked to locate the profile of that person. If you don't have one created, you can click on Create Contact. A pop-up will appear asking to enter information specific about that person. Once you've entered that info, you will click on Create Contact. They will be listed, and you will then select their relationship to the business. If this is an employee, you will scroll down to the Employee and click Link. When adding the signatory, in similar fashion you will link the member, create that profile if needed, and then select the relationship as signatory. Click on Link. We will come back to these profiles to show you how you can add more info, but before we do that, a couple more things to show you in the employer's profile. The next two couple things you can do here is enter logs and set reminders specific to the employer's profile. In the log section, click on Add Comment. By doing so, you can enter any comment you would like. This could serve as a communication tool with other members of your office or simply a notepad to remind yourself. Once you've entered your comment, you can come back and reference that comment. You can also pin a comment to the top so that any important info stays up top in case you wish for yourself or others to see when accessing the client profile. In the Reminder section, you will set any reminder you'd like. Click on Add Reminder. You can then determine the type, the due date, set the date you wish to receive an email, and lastly, the actual thing you'd like to be reminded about. Once you enter this and save it, you will receive an email that morning reminding you. But also, this reminder will show up on the home page where client and case reminders are listed and in the tickler located on the home page. The tickler is a dashboard that shows you all your reminders and expirations and starts alerting you days ahead. You also have a Documents tab which is divided into Other, Questionnaires and Forms. If going to Other, it serves as a general upload page. You will name the document and select the file type to this computer or network. It will then walk you through your device to locate that document and upload. If you have the option of module cloud storage, you can link up a storage site such as Dropbox. If going this route, it will direct you to your account and from there locate the specific document. Once linked, a link is created taking you directly to that image file in your storage site. The questionnaires and forms section will serve as a paper trail of any questionnaire and forms you have sent to your client in the client portal. 
The Cases tab is a section that will show you any case the business profile was tagged. You can start a case from here also. But before we do that, let us see how we can fill out our employee and signatory's profile. There are a couple ways to access their profiles. You can either go into the Members tab since we linked them there, or if on the home page of the software, simply search for a client. Make sure it's checked to individual and proceed to enter criteria such as their names. Once you find a match, click on the Edit button. We are now brought into the client's profile. Everything is divided into right-hand tabs to take you to a different section of the client profile. It is now up to you to go into each section and fill out the information that may apply for your client. If we go into the General Info section, we will see the option to enter phone numbers, names, and much more. Once you enter the info, be sure to click on Save up top before moving on to a different section of the client profile. If we focus on the tabs to the right, we will see you can enter other names. You can enter biographic info, current addresses whether it be US or abroad. You can also create custom fields in the admin portal and store additional information. However, that will be discussed in other videos. You can enter the history of the client which we have divided into previous addresses, marriages, employment, education, and abroad trips. When entering your marriages, you will want to make sure you not only enter previous marriages, but also your current marriage. When entering the current marriage, be sure to click on the current checkbox. This is the area that will transfer into forms asking for current spouse info. When entering employment info, same scenario. You will enter previous employments, but also make sure you enter the current employment, which might be the business profile we just created, and click on the current checkbox, as this will be the area that transfers to current employment sections. The next section is members tab. We will already see the employer tagged here. If you need to tag other people or maybe you haven't tagged the employer, similar to how we saw earlier, simply click link member and from there locate the employer or any individual client. Determine their relationship and click link. This will come in handy if you need to link a spouse or others for this individual case. A side note that could be helpful. If you link members such as a spouse or maybe child, you can transfer info between profiles such as address info. Simply go to that linked member's profile, go to the address section. On the top right of most sections, you will see a copy from button. When clicked, you will click on copy from. You will be brought to a list of linked members. Select the member you wish to copy from and their address info will transfer over. Click save. This copy from option also appears in the previous address sections. Let us continue. The next sections are background check info, which is asked on some forms. Pretty straightforward, you can answer yes or no. When clicking yes, you can enter a detailed explanation in the text box. The next two couple things you can do here is enter logs and set reminders specific to the individual client's profile, similar to how we saw in the business client profile. The last couple things to show you is the document section and the cases tab. The document section is divided into passports, I-94s, visas, user-defined documents, other, questionnaire forms, and also be able to create new document folders by selecting the three dots on the top right corner, selecting new folder, naming it, and finalize by clicking on save. You have now created a new document folder. As we briefly saw in the tickler, documents are another thing that can be tracked. When entering a passport, for example, you will click on Add Passport. You will enter the passport number, the issuing country, issuing date, and the expiration date. If you wish for this to transfer onto forms and be tracked, you will click on the current checkbox. Lastly, you can upload an image file. By default, your only option is this computer or network. When selecting it, it will take you to your device to locate that image file to upload. If you have the optional module cloud storage, you can link up your Dropbox or other, locate the file, and it creates a link to your document in Dropbox or other. With all our document section, it works similar. However, one thing to note is the user defined section. This is a customizable thing in the admin portal that allows you to track any document in the tickler. Some examples are maybe the client has an RFE, or maybe the client has a driver's license. It can track any document type you'd like. 
If interested, we can send you materials on how to customize sections in the admin portal. The last couple things in the document section is you can see any questioner and form that has been sent to the client in the client portal. And in each of these document folders, you can do a batch upload. With batch uploads, you can upload more than one document at a time. Simply open up a document folder on your computer, select the batch upload option, and drag the documents into the Dropbox area. You can then define where in the documents folder you want this document to go and finalize by clicking on upload. The documents will now be uploaded to their respective folders. The last thing to review is the Cases tab. Here you will see if the client has been tagged to a case, but also you can create a case for the client through here. Before we create a case, one last thing to show you in the client profile. If you like how the questions are asked in the questionnaire and prefer to enter info that way, you can click on the alternate view button. You will see a drop down menu of the questionnaires. Once you select one and fill one out, when you click save, all that info will transfer to its respective areas. This alternate view also appears in the employer's profile with specific business related questions. Now that we have covered how to create a client profile, let us now create a case and tag our client to the case. As you previously saw, you can do this in the client profile. However, let us go to the home page and pretend we are starting from there. We will click on the Create button up top and click on Case. The Create Case wizard will appear. You will now go and answer these questions. You will select the department, meaning from which location you are doing this case. You can have the software determine the case number for you or manually insert it. You can give it a case name if you want. These sections are more for reporting and searching purposes. And you will select the process. Now, by default, we have all these cases created for you with the exact forms needed. Keep in mind though, if you are the office manager who oversees, you can customize the case process in the admin portal to be named exactly how you want and to have the exact forms and settings you wish. We will select a program type and category for reporting purposes, which can also be customizable in the admin portal and click on Next. We will now assign caseworkers to this case by searching their names. Once you find a match, click on Next. We are now at the area to link our clients, which include linking the employer and linking the employee. You will start typing out the business client profile until you find a match. You will click on their name, and they are now selected on this case. You will now be asked to give them a role. Even though they are petitioning for their client, you will still list them as employer. By doing so, you will notice you can now select the address and the signatory. If you remember, these were input in the business client profile earlier on this video. You will then locate who are they petitioning for. You will search for the employee, typing out their name until finding a match. You will click on it, and once tagged to the case, you will make them the alien. You will make the employee the main party and click on Next. You will now be brought to a list of forms associated to this case. This section allows you to manually delete or add any form for this specific case. If everything looks good here, you will click on Create. Our case profile has been established and we are immediately brought to the form section. If wanting to work on a form, either click on the Edit button on the left or click on the form number. We are now inside the form. And because we tagged the clients accordingly, the info from the client profile has auto-populated. If you don't see info auto-populate, be sure the client was tagged right. We usually have these small red notes on the side letting you know whose info auto-populate such as employer or alien. Therefore, the client should be tagged as that. Sometimes the forms allow a section to either have the individual's info or the employer. For the most part, there are checkboxes to select and when selecting one, such as organization, it will import the employer's info. There are other tools to work on this form. Even though our software auto-populates info, you can still manually type onto these forms by clicking an area and typing. Keep in mind, even though you can manually type on these fields, this info does not transfer back to the profile. If you notice a major change, it's recommended to go back to the profile and make the change there. However, if it is a quick change, feel free to type directly onto the form. You also have a black toolbar up top with different things to help you work on the form. 
You can save the form by clicking on the Save icon. You can print the form by clicking on the Print icon. A pop-up will appear allowing you to change settings, and once printing, a PDF version will appear where you can save onto your desktop as a backup and send to print. You can change the page you are working on by clicking on the arrows, or type the page number directly, hit enter, and you will be taken to that page. You can also change the size of the page. You have a Type Anywhere icon that allows you to add new text fields on the form. Once you type the message, you can drag and drop that text field anywhere. This can print with the form if selecting that option. Besides the Type Anywhere, you have a Create a Note option. Just like your average sticky note, a yellow note will appear allowing you to enter notes and in similar fashion to the Type Anywhere, you can drag and drop anywhere. You can then decide to include or exclude while printing. You can also add addendums at any time. By default, some of these forms already have addendum pages where it stores any extra info. But this addendum page allows you to type any extra info you like and in similar fashion you can print with the form. Use the replace tool and have the software grab every blank area and replace it with not applicable. The software will now update all those blank areas. Once finished working on a form, click save and exit out the form by clicking the X button on the top right. Once completely done working with the form, you can lock it. By doing so, one, no one can enter information on it, it will only be in view only format, and two, the software oversees updating forms when new versions come out. By locking it, the software keeps it in its original format no matter how many updates have happened. You can also email the forms. You can select the checkbox to the left, and from there, click on Email as Read Only PDF or Email as Editable HTML. If choosing Read Only PDF, you will send it to the client in a non-editable PDF version that they will receive as an attachment in an email. You can choose to send in separate PDF files or one single PDF file. Once you compose your message and click Send, your client will receive that email. If selecting Editable HTML, this will send it to the client either the individual or business client in the client portal, similar to how you would send questionnaires. An email template will appear guiding them to log into the client portal. Once they log in, they can input information directly on the form. They'll submit it to you similar to how they would send the questionnaires. This video has now shown you how to create a client profile, create a case, and work on forms. If you ever need to come back to this case, simply click on the cases icon on the home page Search for the case with any of the criteria asked, or leave every section blank and click Find. It will list all your cases from newest to oldest. Once you spot the case, click on it and you will be brought back to the case profile. Or, if inside the client's profile, go to the Cases tab and you will see your case listed. Click on the case number and you will be brought to your case. This concludes our video on setting up an employment-based case.